This is Joseph Coco. I'm at Ape 2017 on behalf of Becky Holborn's YouTube <laughs> channel and Art Process blog. If you could introduce yourself, please. Uh, hi, my name is Renee, also known as Laughing Bear on like Tumblr and Twitter and stuff like that. Sure. And Renee, what brings you to Ape this year? Um, well, I tabled last year and the year before, so I'm just kind of like doing it again since cool. I like coming here. I yes. mostly just like. I like this con compared to other cons just because there's a lot of original work and I like talking to artists about like their projects and it's a different vibe than like an anime con. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is that what you mostly do? Uh, um, anime cons? Yeah, I usually do uh, anime cons. Like Fanime is usually one that I try to go to and like basically anything in the Bay Area. Okay. So like anything near San Jose or like San Francisco I try to go to. Okay. Um, and what uh, other independent conventions have you uh, tried out? Um, I mean, I know there's plenty of stuff in the Bay Area, so you don't necessarily need to travel too far to go to things, but have you tried other independent uh, comic conventions, um, like in Seattle uh, or anything like that? No, I, I don't really have like the means to travel a lot, so I just mostly stay in like California. Sure. I recently did San Francisco Zine Fest, like in San Francisco. Cool. That, like this year was my yeah. first time selling there, and it was pretty fun. And that's more of like like the indie zine kind of book thing. So kind of similar to this, just yeah. like on a smaller scale, but like up there. And it's pretty, yeah, a, pretty fun. A lot of people were talking about it. We went to Ape when it was in San Francisco the last time it was there. And a lot of people mm -hmm. were talking about San Francisco Zine Fest actually at Ape. So yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I was talking to some other artists too about like, like just like other like indie kind of ones in the area. And sure. I'm sure there's other ones too that I just don't know about, but I went to, I went there like recently. So that's like fresh in my mind. So. Okay. Um, so one thing that uh, Becca was particularly drawn to at your table are your acrylic charms. Uh, can oh, yeah. you tell me a little bit um, about uh, the the process you went through to have these created? A lot of them are, um, uh, or all of them are double sided, and some of them have unique images on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, um, like basically, when I get an idea, I kind of decide what. It's usually based on the material. So like. For some of uh, like these clear ones, they have like a really different backside, and that you can only yeah. really do that with clear ones. Right. So I chose to do clear ones for those. Whereas I used to have like one, like this one is on like gold, like acrylic, and this one, I just wanted to try what it would look like. Yeah. But it really depends on like the material for them. And um. Are you going through Inkit for these or different servers? Yeah, actually, some of them are from Inkit, and then I've had this one is from uh, Zap Creatives because they're the only one with these like glitter acrylic ones. Yeah. And then on the, a new place I tried out recently is Vograce, so they also do like double sided charms, and like these bigger ones are from Vograce. Okay. And they're a little different because for for like um, so I'm like jumping around the board, but like oh, it's fine. for. There's probably one here. For this one, this is from Inkit. There's like, on the back side, it's kind of like, you can see the, where the, print, the image is printed on. So you can tell it was printed on this side. Yeah, yeah. And this side has like plastic on, like the acrylic on this side. Mm -hmm. But um, for Vograce, for like this one, it's like clear, it's acrylic on both sides. So it's a double-sided, like yeah, a double so it's a double one. shot, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of why I wanted to, I like going with Bograce right now, since it's, I like having the smooth material on both sides and it kind of protects the image. Yeah, of course. So that yeah, those are pretty much the not gonna rub there. off over time or anything like that. Yeah, it like, looks really like, it's really smooth to touch and I like that part. Yeah. And yeah, oh, and then another, <laughs> I'm just gonna like talk about these. Okay. But another one is, um. Uh, Vograce does these like glitter acrylic ones, so I don't know if you can kind of like see the glitter. Yeah, it's coming it. through. Yeah, so nice. they also do like glitter ones, and that's like the only place I know who does that, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, they just have set colors, or you can actually specify what color um, the glitter is inside um, of the They only acrylic. have one type of glitter, but it's like pretty like multicolored glitter. Yeah. Like the standard just kind of glitter. general sparkle, sparkle power. Yeah, sparkle power. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I really like about them, so okay. they're like cool places to try now. Nice. And um, obviously, uh, ape isn't um, for charms or that sort of thing. But a lot of people do have that at their tables. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like um, your charms are faring at the at the show? I was doing pretty good. A lot of people like I had like a Nintendo Switch dog one, so that one's pretty popular. Yeah. So like, just kind of they're doing pretty well. I just like I have them, so I just bring them to every place. Yeah, I go of to. course. I mean, so, yeah. you have the space on the table, so why not yeah. bring things? It's not like it's not related to your to your art. So yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, also, can you tell me a little bit about some of your um, your comics? 
Oh yeah, sure. So like I have a couple here. Most of them are just like art kind of books or art collections. Yeah. And then this one is actually a project I did for my life drawing class. We were able to do kind of anything we wanted as long as it involved like the body and like people posing. Okay. So for this one, I wanted to do like different <laughs> fantasy outfits. And I did kind of like sets of three. So like these ones are different types of knights based nice. around like, like a theme like the moon candy. And this one's like princesses, so there's three princess outfits there. Oh my god, they are so cute. Thank you. And yeah, some of these poses are like actually from life drawing. So like the one over here is like the model was just holding like a stick, but I made it into like a fork. Sure. So that was like based on my like school project. But we were able to have like a lot of freedom with it. So like I kind of just like did my own stuff. And and yeah, this last what's your is What's your process for these? You're starting traditionally and then moving digitally? Yeah, actually for this one, I sketched them in pencil. So like I had like paper, I sketched it in pencil and then I scanned it and then colored it digitally. Okay. Just because I don't like doing line art digitally, it like, if I draw too intensely, it hurts my hands. And yeah. it's just like really tedious for me. But if I do it with pencil, it's like, I like, I like doing that instead. And I like the textures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, that that's definitely a problem that Becca has. She's got a very tight grip on her um, her pen, and she often uses uh, uh, mechanical pencils. So if she gets something with a metal metal body, and she's gripping it like really yeah. tight, by the end of her day, her hand is just wrecked, basically. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way with like um, usually like with like a pen. I guess like whenever I draw with a tablet, I like focus too hard or whatever. But it like hurts me if I try to draw like straight lines or like really clear lines huh. for those. So that's why I like doing traditional line art and stuff. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and some of your your other works. Uh, what's your latest? Um, my newest one is actually this one, which is the second book for washi this greens. one. Yeah. yeah, and it's basically a bunch of art with a bunch of washi tape. Okay. And uh, these pieces start off as. Um, pieces that you want to enhance with washi tape or it's just things you've created and um, you lay washi tape on them after the fact to kind of make them pop. Yeah I actually do it like when I plan it with the washi tape in mind so like I have like a ton of washi tape yeah and like I just want to like find use for them so I just like make pictures based on washi tape. Some of them are like this is like from magazine clippings and stuff, so it's like okay. other stuff including washi tape. Yeah, I understand. But yeah, like this one, like these screen things are the washi tape and the ghosts are mine. But like this picture was from like a magazine. But it's yeah. super cute. Thank you. But yeah, I just like I have a lot of tape, so I like using them for stuff other than just like taping them on the Decorating boxes. things. Yeah. yeah. I mean it makes sense that it, it it feels like an art product. Um and a lot of people do use uh, like repeating textures in general in their artwork. Yeah, and it's like um, I like it just because it's fun to take a do art like outside the computer. Like for me, most of these things are like digital, but like I want to like take a break from like the screen and using a tablet. So like using these washi tape art mm -hmm. is like kind of therapeutic for me because I can just kind of like make my own thing on my own time. Makes sense. And like I don't have to look at a screen to do it, and I can just like make it on my own. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, making your own washi tape? I've talked to several artists uh, who actually um, 